Hello everyone, as we've just released our new big uh, 1.2 update on Pixera, I would like to present you all of our new features in short videos. So the first feature I would like to showcase is our new pixel mapping. And in order to do so, I've created an LED wall, a long LED stripe, and I've put some content onto it uh, just to have something up and running. And first thing we want to do is connect our outputs. So the first special thing here is now it is possible or we are now able to connect multiple outputs to a single LED or we could also uh, add multiple LEDs to a single output. There's quite a big variance now. And as we do so, we now have the possibility to dive in here into our LED similar as you're used to it in our compositing tab for the inner compositing. So in here, I have now my so-called feeds. On the left side, you can see your feed source and on the right side, you can see your feed destination. And those destination are immediately connected to your actual output. Output. So let's imagine here instead of my laptop's output, we have an LED controller or two LED controllers. So now I will change my first source feed. So let's change this for example to feed 40 by 288. And as you can see now, as I change it here, it is being changed here immediately. So this one is connected to my output number nine. And I can now freely place this on my output. I can also rotate it. There are quite a lot of modifications in here. And for my second feed source, I will now add this, or this is now immediately added to my output number 10. So to my second output, so now let's add uh, again, some settings here. So I'll now change this to 1920 by 288. Let's snap it, something like that. And of course, it's also possible to add multiple or add additional source feeds. And as I will hit this button, and selection window will appear. And I can now tell Plexera, please do this for output 10. There we go. Another source destination, let's again to 1920, for example. Reposition it here. Something like that. And our destination position, let's do something like this. As you can see now, both added to onto my outputs. There you go. The next feature I would like to showcase is our new autosave feature. So here on the right top side, you can f find beside your load and save current project buttons, the um, turn autosave on and off button, which just lets you turn it on and off. Furthermore, in the options in your project tab, you can find, uh, again, enable and disable autosave, which does basically the same as the button on the top. And don't save while timeline is running, which I would highly recommend during playback. Furthermore, you can also tell Pixera the autosave interval in minutes as well as the maximum number of files being created. So in my Windows Explorer, that's how it looks like. We have, or I have my four project files right here and beside my project files, I now have furthermore my autosave project files, which um, overrides the files um, depending on how many I have and depending on the timestamps. The next features I'd like to showcase are mute layer and layer offset. So mute layer is quite an easy showcase. All you have to do is just simply click the button here on your uh, layer. As you can see, both layers were selected. That's why I executed the mute, mute in both. Now let's unmute those again. Um, the next feature is going to be the so-called layer offset. And for this, I will just add uh, our AV Stumpful logo right here on top, on our topmost layer. And in our layer options on the right side, you can now find offset options. And here I will now 
change my scale to 25%. And I can now also reposition this layer to a certain position I'd like it to be for picture in picture applications, for example, live inputs, whatever you want to use it for. And everything that is now put onto this layer will be automatically placed right where I've set my offset position. So now let's follow up with timeline export and content transcoding. So for timeline export, I have created a small scene here with a 3D model of one of our ISE uh, exhibition booths. And I've put some content on some of the displays in order to preview it. And now I'm going to export the rendering of my preview. So in order to do so, I can limit my aspect ratio of my viewport to 16 by 9, for example. And all I have to do then is just simply click the button here, export timeline, which will bring up our export timeline window. And in here, I can now choose to either render out the workspace itself. So the camera viewport we basically see in our preview or one of the single screens I have content played back on. Um, I can choose video codec, file name, resolution, and then do the export. And as this will take quite a while, I have uh, already prepared this. So as you can see here, I've already got three workspace renders in here. So let me just quickly drop this here on our screen so we can showcase the video. So that's the actual preview export I've done uh, from my viewport. Now, the next feature um, I want to discuss is content transcoding. If you want to re-render content to a different codec or file format in Pixera, you can do this directly in Pixera. All you have to do is just uh, select content transcoding uh, right here on the top uh, beside preview, which will then open the content transcoding window. And uh, what you have to do is just drag and drop the video you want to encode into content transcoding. So now my path is loaded. Let's load in a file destination. Let's call this transcode test, save. Then you can choose from different presets. So I'm going for hub full HD now, uh, no compression and start transcoding. So this will be quite a lot faster. So that's now 4K hub as you can see. And the uh, cool thing about this, like with exported content, the content transcoding feature will place the transcoded video right inside your resources. So you don't have to go out back in your Windows Explorer, re-import the video. Uh, you can basically just use it right away. So as you can see here, here's our transcode test. And let's go back to a preview just drop it on our screen here on the back. And as you can see, same file in hub instead of H.264, now render it out. So next on my list is playback controls on multiple timelines. So in order to do or to show you this new feature, I've prepared a small project with two simple timelines. Uh, some content in there and some cues. And our new timeline playback controls uh, let us quite easily control now our two timelines. As you can see, I can send a jump, play, as well as stop from a timeline. And I also get an indication field which tells me the name of my next cue. Additionally, to those playback controls, we also have access to uh, the first jump to next queue. If I trigger this, it will just jump to my next queue on the last uh, queue. When it's triggered, it, it will jump back to zero as it is a jump uh, queue. And additionally to that, the first icon is toggle next queue state active ignore once. So if I execute this, it will ignore the next queue 
and afterwards set it to active again. Next follow our so-called timeline multi-head features. In Pixera, we have developed some special technology behind our timeline, which allows us the possibilities to blend to any given time on the timeline, as well as our awesome new feature preview edit. So blend to time is actually quite easy. So I'm just going to trigger my playback here. Uh, all you want to do is right click on any certain part in your timeline or any part you want to jump to, go blend to time, and then it will blend with a certain duration which you can set up in your settings. Or you simply hit shift and left click onto that time and it will perform the jump with an uh, automatic blend. As you can see, my locator turns blue for one second. That's the one second fade duration. Our second uh, multi-head feature is our so-called preview edit. Preview edit can be activated by clicking this button here, preview edit, which will then create a second locator on our uh, timeline. In my case, a blue locator. And my blue locator now uh, lets me work in my preview without actually corrupting the ongoing output. So my white locator here is still playing out on my render outputs whilst I can use my blue locator now in order to do real real time preview editing. So I could for example now take logos and add some layers and do all my compositing work here in real time during the show. Let's do something like that. And now if I'm satisfied with my results, I can go and play in here. And this fader now lets me change on my output between preview locator and real locator. And then I've got two more buttons. One is move to preview and one move back to main. For example, if I now hit move to preview, it will again perform a fade. And during a one second fade, move my playout locator to my preview locator. So there are two major features missing now. And the next one we want to discuss is our path list export. So in my case now I have a bigger project here with some projectors, some projection screens and two LEDs as you can see. And in Pixera, you can now, in your Options and Project tab, export a so-called part list. So when I select Export Part List, I can either choose from XML or CSV. I've already done the CSV export, so now let's open it here in my Windows Explorer and now let's double click here in order to open the part list. And as you can see now, here, part list with brand uh, information, so the model, the uh, used lens, resolution, brightness, contrast, lens shift, whatsoever, as well as for the LED, stuff like the actual count, power average, size, and so on. So last but not least, let's talk about the last uh, feature of our 1.2, the last big feature of our 1.2 update, which is the project bundling. So if you, for example, prepare a project at home, you already have some of the content, uh, you can go into your options and go to bundle project. So I'm going to do this now, which will then open my Explorer. So let's go and put it here, uh, new folder, bundle, there you go. And let's hit start. So now during this process, as you can see, it won't take too long as we 
have not that many big files in the project. I would like to mention that we, of course, have big amount of bug fixes and brushes and smaller additions in 1.2 which I didn't cover in the video now. So if you want to get a glimpse of, of uh, all the new stuff that's actually in the software I would highly recommend to read through our change logs. And yeah I hope you enjoy all the new Pixera features as much as I do. And thank you for watching and have a great time with the software.